I feel like I'm in high definition. What does that even mean? I got no idea. It <laughs> sounded good. I see. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, God, what was it? Some guy was promoting high def tennis. Yeah, what is that? Like 1080. What? Yeah, I mean, 1080. Sounds, 1080. Kind of, sounds, yeah. sounds like extra pixels yeah. on his forehand. Yeah, I got clarity today. Oh. Very running high definition. I see. Well, that's better. That actually makes a little bit of sense. Uh, what's up, guys? Hope you're having a great start to your Saturday morning, wherever you are. Brent Abel here uh, in Southern California, the Southern California Desert Rancho Mirage, the Mission Hills Country Club behind me. Um, we got some weather coming in, apparently. Yeah. According to the weather man of the forecaster. And uh, our, so our weather's already in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard yesterday too. So, um, uh, and and by the way, we're looking at the birthday boy over there. Um, yeah. Oh, me. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, the big six four today, Jeff. Um, yeah. Wow, that's kind of a nice, a lot of number. I mean, yeah, right out six four. Whole... It's pretty good numerology thing i got no idea what it means i got you know is it good is it bad is it, is it okay i feel pretty good this morning so that you know we'll just call that a win i okay, that's a good start <laughs> well so last year in the 60s that's scary for anyone who's in you know the 65s going oh my god here comes jack looks like a freight train going downhill in the 65s january 1st of 2025. yep that's impressive yeah 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 so yeah, I get to I get to bump up next year in the, yeah. the Wilson and be and be the rookie. <laughs> and be right. the rookie. Well, you're good enough. It doesn't matter what what age you are in your age group. You're always a major threat anyway. So, um, Mar Mark, uh, good morning. And uh, there it is, Lefty Rich Crank Cranks. It's a beautiful morning. Yeah. <clears throat> there they are. Yeah, tried and true. Yep. Tried and true. Rich, Rich and I are going to put some work in on uh, Tuesday. Yeah, good. All right. Yeah. Uh, did you watch Grigor again last night? Oh, my God. The guy is on fuego. He's beautiful. Absolutely the way tennis is supposed to be played. Yeah. Full court. Yeah. Just, you know, resetting, rebooting with that beautiful slice back end. Since, yes. since he has adopted that over the last few years, really – remodeled his game with with his specific skills he's just beautiful to watch on the court it's just yeah. it's remarkable yeah yeah well i thought his post match interview um his post match interview was really great i mean it was it was just so like you know what life is great right now and whether i win or whether i lose i just want to keep getting better whatever that means and i think it's showing up in his spur of the moment athleticism yeah i mean yeah like that, like that let cord volley that he just get you know in your words kind of spidered off into into the right. open court with authority as he's going yeah. down. Just a quick little Spider-Man move. Boom. Oh, I got this. <laughs> I just thought, wow. And, yeah. and the other thing I saw too is, is he's, uh, he was working over the forehand actually against both Alcaraz um, and also as a very last night where he'd, he'd get a relatively short cross court uh, forehand and he'd just take that thing in the rise and just, just move right through it. Just, just no hesitation going down right. the line. And, uh, and then he's in. Yeah. Make the guy come up with the goods. Yeah. I mean, that, that's make the guy produce. Isn't that Tom Stowe forcing game one oh one? Make the guy produce. Right. Yeah. And occasionally he's going to, but you know, as the match wears on, can we can we just get a little under his skin and and just plant a little bit of doubt or a little bit of boy, I got to hit it just a hair better, and that's when the magic happens. That's yeah. the thing, you know. Well, and I would say that Mr. Stowe also said that 
even the great opponents, the great players over there, they start to become human over the course yeah. of the match. And yeah. that could not be more true. Hey, Kev, what's up? Um, morning, Kevin. Kevin. Morning, Owen. Big O's on the on the board today. Well, he's no, he's no longer shy. He's actually showing up and uh, contributing to the betterment of the of the live stream. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Jordan going for number one in the sixty fives. Uh, it, it could be possible. Um, I'm going to get through this year first. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. <laughs> I've got, I definitely have to address my shoulder and, and figure it, figure it out. Cause, um, um, still, still bothering you a little bit. Yeah. 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 Huh? yeah. And I, I just can't find a slot for the serve, you know, unless, unless I can, um, you know, I gotta, I gotta figure it out anyway. Okay. So we'll, we'll, you know, I have to take that into, into consideration. Yeah. I can do everything else fine. No, that doesn't bother me whatsoever. I can so you don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know. You yeah. got to get the MRI and get right. the hoo ha. Mm -hmm. Get the eyeballs on it. Right. You know. So that. Well, that nice. big uh, that big health insurance policy you've got, I'm sure will yeah. take oh, care of that. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, all right, guys. Well, let's uh, let's get to and again. Happy birthday, Jeff. Um, Thank you. Big day. Oh, and and I guess you've like you said you get that reservation at four thirty with your brother at that. Uh, yeah, Cole's is shop. It, is it just a pull? Is it a full? Oh, it's actually a restaurant. It's not like oh a yeah, dive, yeah, it's not a dive. No, bar. no, this is it's, it's probably the nicest, one of the nicest restaurants in the valley. It's um, if Napa. you want a steak, if you want a steak, that's where you go. Um, and the bar is it's a classic bar. Um. And the bartenders know their stuff. These guys are pros. There's not a bottle behind that bar you couldn't ask them a question about, and they will stand there and give you exactly what's going on with that bottle and what's okay. in it and how it got there. <laughs> Always good to know. Yeah. Always good to know. All right. Uh, let's see. What am I looking for here? I don't see it. Maybe is that it? Yeah. Ah. Oh, look, magic. Court nine at the BTC. Court nine, the BTC. And like I told Jeff uh, before we started the recording, I tried to find a video clip of him, like one point where he's actually, you know, doing the right shot. But I just ran out of time, Jeff. You know, I just, and it was all double. So it was your partner's fault. I'm sure it was. It was. <laughs> I shall remain nameless. Um, <laughs> Guys, double serve and volley. We've talked a lot about this. And I think the message today was, at least in the email, was some of the common terminology um, can put us into awkward shot choices, mm -hmm. such as serve and volley. And uh, you got to be careful that, that you don't automatically go with the terminology just because you take it literally. And so for me, I'm, and I know that you feel the same way too, Jeff, I'm always looking for, not that I want a sub menu of shot choices, but I want to be able to, to have a better choice. Right. Um, than, than just having to believe in the terminology. Hey, Dan. Um, <laughs> that's a pretty good from Dan Fisher. Happy birthday, Jeff. I was hoping you would skip a few birthdays so I could get to a different age group than you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great, Dan. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I, I, uh, there are a couple guys out there, same way for me. I just go, God, I just, just stay out of my age group. All right. Right. It's, you know, now with some guys, that's, that's always going to happen. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so, funny. all right, let's get to it. Um, I would yeah, say this too that when, when you know when the, the term serve and volley yeah sometimes gets said so fast it's one word right and there's actually there's actually spaces in between those words serve and it should be serve and then volley okay and so that you actually you know there's there's you have to finish your serve and then you're moving forward and then your split step there's there's stuff that happens in between the serve and the volley so there's know, a sequence I know what you're gonna what you're gonna get at here is yeah that and and so serve and volley is not one word. <laughs> That's 
Yeah, should be serving maybe a volley. Oh. And then volley. See, that was a great, yeah. great choice right there on your part. Pulled up. Why, why play in the dirt if you don't have to? Yeah, I just think now you're really limited. If you go and try to volley this thing, the geometry is not great. And you have to volley up, which which we don't want. So yeah. it could be serve and volley, could be serve and half volley, could be serve and put on the brakes, pull up, as Jeff says. Let this ball get some geometry for you. And and sure, sure. I mean, you've got shot choices here, but I just kind of look at this as okay. I'm gonna let the ball get up, and I've already I've already pretty much got the shot choice in mind. I don't want to go through a whole laundry list of what I could possibly do with this. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, down below in the description area, when we're done, guys, take a look. If you haven't, if you haven't picked up my five mindset skills, 28 day course, uh, I invite you to do so. It is down below in the description area. There's a link that will take you over there uh, when we are done. So Jeff, here it is, man. Okay. Just smooth. <laughs> smooth like butter. <laughs> so so before we even get it into your shot, which is fabulous, I mean that that's that's uh you know that's big boy ball right there. Um so you know in the serve and volley portion of it, right? And this is where it becomes really critical, especially in senior ball. We're not as fast as we used to be. The serve isn't as big as we used to be. He actually gets good contact on this ball early, right? He's Absolutely. up in the court. He's already up in the court already. So, so if you moving forward, digging the ball out of the dirt, they've got proximity on the net. They're looking for a ball to come up, yeah, out of out of the dirt. And if you That's pull right. up now, now you've changed your geometry and the geometry of the ball on your strings, where you get to take it in the strike zone. So again, you know, especially specific to senior tennis, you know, at 21, I'm banging a first serve at 115, 120. The guy's not standing there on my second serve. If he does, I'm going to jack that thing over his head probably at, at age 21 with a, with a kicker, right? I'm going to get him. He's going to be so far off the court that it's not even a contest at what he's going to have to do with the ball, right? And my first volley is probably going to be inside the service line at age 21. So, so we've got to take into consideration that the fact that the serve doesn't have the same juice on it it used to. So my returner is already closer than 20 years ago on returning the ball, which means that ball flight is shorter, less time. So I think, you know, this is, this is classic. This is, this is a beautiful representation of, of reading the play correctly reading reading the writing on the wall and going whoa wait a second i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up here and yeah and get a better get a better choice well the, the other thing we can look at here is um you you and i get this question a lot you know well where's the right place to split step and it's not where it's when when so because like you just pointed out the returner is taking this early the when part for the split step for me is earlier. Yeah. So if this guy, I mean, look where he is as the ball's right. not even, now it's crossing the net. I, I'm. Uh, You're still finishing your serve. I'm still finishing the serve. And, and this just knowledge I have of this unique player is right. that I'm going to have to be split stepping sooner, even if I ding a good serve. And so, but if he was the type of player in doubles that maybe would stay back behind the baseline, well, then I'm not split stepping here. I'm split stepping later. Yeah. So get this in your mind, guys, that it's not about where, it's about when. And, you know, the, the combination of when is based on the speed of your serve, how fast does it get to them, and where are they when they receive it? And that's... That's that's the split step timing, right? And you're right. I mean, I, these these guys have got great great core position. <clears throat> Get rid of that. Yeah. I don't need that little message. Thank you. And then from here, it's just like all I'm really trying to do is I'm not thinking winner, but I am thinking I want to get the ball 
in front of the guy down low. I want to create right. some bad geometry from him. And then when I right. look up, I can, I can tell that yeah, this is going to scoot by him. Um, and lo and behold, Oh, that just happened to be and another match point, Jeff. <laughs> and yeah, that was a brilliant, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a great shot. You, you, you know, I mean, that's just, but I mean, how, how difficult is that a difficult shot technique? Nope. No, it's just stupid, simple. All that yeah. you've got to make sure that you do is that you create the right geometry for yourself to allow this ball to look, it's coming in. It's not, it's not a half volley type thing. It's bouncing up. Right. And now you've got, I mean, you could take it up the line, but my God, then this 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 whole thing's the lower vo uh, forty yeah, right. is wide you, you, open. Yeah, you just expanded that target by you know, yeah five times. Not, you you could play it in the middle. You could, and that would be fine. But but, but even even that, you know, and if, if you play the middle, it's like to me, you've got to, and if you go line, you've got to put a little authority on the ball to really make it. Because uh, if you play it softer and the ball hangs a little bit i mean he's already you know the, the the returner is already he's sneaking toward the middle yeah you, know, you can see him he's he's floating to to close the gap in the center of the court and the gap on your side of the court is still very open you know i think yeah i think even if even if you would just if you didn't catch the angle as good and he got a racket on the ball you're still you got the ball down underneath him because he's at the service line right now so there's room You've got a little room if you go softer to get the ball underneath him. So you could have even played the ball right at him, at his feet. Well, that was and, I'm not and you saying would have that. Been, was, I'm not saying that that. Well, I'm not saying that the, where it ended up wasn't the intention. However, right. um, there's a margin there. You had margin as yeah, long as you kept the ball down. Right. There was a little room to play underneath him, and your partner's standing right in front of him, so there is no down the line. Right. If you if you go right at him and play underneath right. him at his feet, um, and you're fine on the geometry there because he's not going to be able to sting the ball if it's if it's down there and he's got to deal with it at his shoelaces. So, um, I th I think you know the the you, players right. have to see the 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 reality of like every ball isn't struck with you know with authority you know hit hard hit heavy um, to the most you know like i gotta hit it between them well that might be the might be the right choice but i don't need to blast it between them i can play it soft between them let them dig in the dirt a little bit get better geometry for myself i mean the the the, the play of hitting the ball a little softer underneath you know we did that a few weeks ago too a couple of weeks ago we talked about that and i think this still falls into that category of, of yeah. playing the ball soft and underneath agreed agreed one, one of the things that uh I got from the, the great Pat Blaskauer in the, she wrote the book, uh, The Art of Doubles. She, former Tom Stowe student. But one of the things that she pointed out was that when you have an outside shot, meaning if I was playing a forehand, if I was playing a forehand from, let's say, this part of the court here. Right. That that then the middle's really more of a shot choice. But when you're playing an outside shot, meaning that now you've got a backhand if you're right-handed and the ball is out here, I don't know, for lack of a better term, outside. The middle looks, might look open, but you got, the ball's going to travel in front of that, right. that opponent that's right in front of you. And if, you know, I know he's back on the service line right now for whatever reason, but if he's in a step or two, that's really dicey, you know, to be thinking yeah. that, well, you know, down the middle solves the riddle, the old thing. I'm not so sure if when you have the ball on the outside that that's the case. Yes, if you're if you've got a ball in the yes. middle of the court, okay. Because if you don't get if this thing leaks a little bit towards that that opponent who's directly in front of you, yeah. There's a moment in time where there's just a wide open lower 40 <laughs> between the two of you guys. So Right. Right. And and you know the careful. the other the other side of this is that um sometimes looking at from this perspective you know and this is the perspective that we you know we always see the court from and so you're really looking at this from from the wrong angle 
we are as spectators. We're seeing this from the wrong angle. We have to be seeing it from your perspective because that's where the that's where the geometry is being created from. And so that's how you can tell, you know, the the returner is actually closing. He's closing the gap on the center of the court like he should. Yeah. And, and he should force you to hit that shot that you just hit. He should make you hit that shot to force you to go out to the edges for the pass, right? So so sometimes it can be it can be um, a false read. Standing from this perspective, it does. It looks like you know there's a fair amount of space there between them in the center of the court. Or hey, it looks like there's a fair amount of space there going down the line. And unless we're unless we're behind the ball and in line with the ball from the trajectory it's coming in from, it can be a false read sometimes from a spectator's point of view. Going well, why didn't he just do this? Right, well, because right. The geometry is different when you actually are standing in the in the place of contact. So, that's good. That's good. Uh, let's let's take a look at some of these comments here. Mark Jordan, are you cherry picking your greatest shots? And so, I mean, the only reason this looks like a great shot is because it ended up being a winner, but it was not intentional to be a winner. And yeah. was it a great shot in terms of oh my god, I'm in an awkward, you know, Grigor Dimitrov. Uh, you know, let cord. Spray. <laughs> no, the ball's sitting there. This is not a great shot. This is a shot that we all ought to be able to hit 99 out of 100 times and just play it over there, just like you say, slow and low. And and if the guy is is because of the disguise, the guys, like you pointed out, um, cross court, takes a little step in the middle, anticipating that's where it might go. And then right. it ends up as a winner. It's not a great shot. So you got to be careful with, with what you categorize as yeah. just because something ends up being a winner. And lots of times, at least in my mind, over the last few years, I, I would say winners to me are just completely a byproduct of, okay, the ball bounced twice over there. All right, yeah. it's I don't know byproducts the right word, but I mean, the ball if, if, bounced twice. I'm still assuming as I'm playing this shot that the guy is going to be able to get it, and if, right. if he does it, okay, it's a winner. Um, and and you probably end up putting more pressure on yourself as you set up to play this shot. Like I'm going to hit this, and it's not coming back. Right. That's when the 99 out of 100 times of making this shot starts to go down to 50. <laughs> Well, it flips yeah. one out of 99. Okay, there you go. Sorry, I was being generous. Um, Suzanne, Susanna F. Are you guys the same, Susanna F. and Susan Ferguson? Hmm, probably not. Green, green. Maybe not. Maybe you're on. Anyway, uh, Susanna, should the guy on the other side have come in close to the net as you were hitting? Well, what I would tell you in this situation is that the opponent who's in front of me in the dark shirt I think should have been in the middle of his service box and shading a little yeah. bit towards that single sideline yep. where they're staggered a little bit. And uh, the guy cross court from me, I just think they have the wrong positions there in terms yeah. of the stagger because um, the middle is open. The middle is wide open because the guy in front of me is, is staying back and, and, Look, we see this a lot, Jeff. You start off on the service line as the returner's partner, and you just stay there. Right. And 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 now what you're creating is this vacuum. This that sucking sound you hear is all those jobs going down to Mexico. Um, <laughs> thank you, Ross Perot. Um, but it's just this. It's this vacuum where where the middle's wide open, and the only way right. you take that is. Once your partner returns back cross court, you move in and you start to take away the middle. Especially to see the ball, you know, dropping. The guy's got to give you something. I mean, his job is to give you something to look at. The guy, the guy, you know, right across from you. Exactly. And a he, fake he's coach. Got a score, exactly. He's got a, a fake, a fake cover down the line. Yes. Something just to give you something else to think about, other than how comfortably you pulled up and just went over there and hit this little little cut cross court because you look quite comfortable. You didn't look like you were rushed. You don't look like you were overstressed about the choice. You you were just like, oh, let me just feather this thing over there and see what happens. Yeah. And so, you know, the job, everybody's job, if you're not hitting the ball, is to be figuring out where can I stand to help 
uh, create more stress for my opponent. Right. And so, yeah, I would agree that, um, you know, whether whether the returner should be closer or not. I don't know. I'm on the fence. I think he's that. in a pretty good spot. There. I think he's a pretty and, good and, spot. And I think but... he does. You know, one of the reasons that I think he kind of hedges towards the middle is because his partner is staying there in the service line. <clears throat> he's thinking, yeah. well, now I'm probably going to have to cover this because the middle is wide open. If that if that partner in front of me actually moves up as he should, then I don't think our cross court guy, you know, maybe, maybe my shot is, is just not as, as available. So yeah. um, Susan, do you split step to determine the returner direction um, or depth or of depth return. of return? So the, well, like so, I said before, I mean, to me, the split step is based on when, when do they receive it and, and how close are they to the net? If they stay way back, um, I'm going to split step a little bit later. Yeah. And, and the split um, step is, is for the whole point of the split step is to gather your momentum so that you can redirect it. Yeah. I got I got to gather it so I can redirect it left, right, or accelerate forward, or in some circumstances, put the brakes on stop and pull up. Cause I might have to cover a lob even off yeah. the surf. It does. Right happen. So, yeah. So, so you've got to, that, that's the point of the, of the split step is to gather your momentum to be able to redirect it where you need to go cover the ball. And that's, doesn't matter whether it's off the serve, the serve, the serve and volley, of course, is probably the, is the toughest, the most delicate timing of all the split stops, probably split steps. Uh, you know, everything else is happening in between ground strokes. And if you're already at the net, you're checking, you know, you hit and you check and it's all happening pretty fast. But the, the, the timing of the split step off the serve is the most, let's say, delicate or fragile. Because if, you, if you're late doing it, it you're, it's, it's done. You're, you know, you're, you're flailing. If, if you're too late with this, yeah, it gets, gets ugly. You know. okay. <laughs> let's say it like it is. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Uh, hope this has been helpful today. Um, it's going to rain like hell today, and they got the sprinklers on. Okay. Right on. Um, it's the way we roll here. Yeah. Um, what else? I guess that's it. Uh, going to be a big gym day, I think. I don't really think that uh, O and I are getting out there at whatever time, 930. Um, but maybe we will. We'll see. Anywho. And then, um, and, oh, it's by Susanna. The way, not Susan. It's Susanna F. Different, different person. Okay, cool. Okay, same initials, but not the same person. Right, good, good. Uh, all right, guys, hope this has been helpful today. Uh, Jeff, again, happy birthday. Thank um, you. Be safe out there. There's this thing called Uber in case you need it. Absolutely. <laughs> good. I'm, I'm, I got it right here. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's on your and I'm not, afraid to use it. I'm not afraid to use it. Okay, good. <laughs> um, my youngest daughter's birthday is today, as you know. That's right. As well. That's right. Yeah. So she's a little younger. She's not playing the 60s? 65s? No, no, okay. she's not going to the 65s next year. <laughs> that would be a miracle. Um, or, well, anyway. So, all right, guys, listen, get out there. Have a great day today. And uh, gang, we will Oh, well, got to help someone else have a great day as well. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.